All right. I think everyone is back from the break now. Hope you all had some uh, refreshments. Um, my name is Ulrich Martin Larsen, and uh, Stefan Friedli, who's sitting right there in the white T-shirt, who just raised his hand, uh, is the other half of Put Put, um, where um, Stefan has a background in graphic design and is also a front-end developer uh, and is from Switzerland. Um, I'm originally a fashion designer. Uh, I also work as a teacher, and I'm from Denmark. Uh, we're based in Copenhagen, and we have been working together since 2011. Um, so one of the main reasons for starting Put Put was to have a creative outlet uh, where we don't have to consider clients, uh, but where we're free to do whatever we want. Uh, we both have full-time jobs uh, on the side, and we needed a place where we could realize all of uh, our ideas, um, no matter how big or small. Uh, to start off, we'll show you a couple of uh, examples of what we do. Uh, one of the very first projects we did in 2012 is called Popsicles. Um, and to us, it still remains one of the best examples of how we work and what we're interested in communicating uh, through our images. So basically, we're extremely fascinated by the objects that we uh, surround ourselves with in everyday life. Uh, the things we take for granted but might not notice. We really enjoy working with these ob objects uh, and unlocking their hidden potential. It's not so much about what things are, but what they, what they may become. Uh, a question that we always get is uh, about our name. Uh, why Put Put? Uh, it's actually very straightforward. Uh, it's the space between input and output, which uh, naturally must be Put Put. Um, actually, we don't see ourselves as photographers, uh, but photography is uh, the best suited medium to document and that allow us, um, allows us to choose what we want to be seen. Um, I think that actually comes a bit from the fact that we're uh, control freaks. So we, we really need to be in control of what is seen in our images um, also Photography allows us to conserve very transient materials. What we hope to accomplish with our work is that uh, people look twice. Uh, I think the highest compliment we can get is if people do a double take. Uh, sometimes we work with very subtle changes to the objects and other times we're quite explicit and uh, direct. Um, but if we go back to everyday objects, uh, over the years we've worked with uh, many different objects ranging from functional to decorative. Uh, in this case, a series called Vessels. We have been uh, combining uh, decorative objects with practical lids from different containers, um, creating a new object topology which is placed between function and decoration. Um, for us, it's also super important that the things we do uh, exist as physical objects um, and that the changes or interventions take place in front of the camera and not in Photoshop. Uh, for this project, which is called uh, Soft Construction, uh, we made one-to-one -one reconstructions of standard uh, building blocks or cinder blocks um, in different types of soft foam. Um, so there was very much a focus on uh, a change in materiality. Uh, recently, we've also started to work uh, quite a lot with sculptures. Uh, we use uh, found objects and put them into new systems and new contexts. And also what we do quite a lot is we take advantage of 
uh, accessible means of production to create unique uh, objects uh, to sort of um, yeah try to interrupt uh, an industrial uh, production process. So we have produced our own sex tape, sort of in the hopes of fame and fortune. It seems to work for quite a lot of people, not, not so much for us so far, but uh, we'll see. Uh, and we've also uh, produced a series of uh, prizes, so if you want to congratulate someone on their first STD, this would be the thing. Um, aesthetically, I think we're very intrigued by advertising pack shots, images that are normally considered uh, ugly ads from local supermarkets. Um, and we quite, of, quite often try to play along with that aesthetic. So um, we, we try to accomplish quite a reduced pack shot in, uh, expression in some cases. Um, also, a lot of our projects are based on research, so research and collecting. Um, for the paint roller series, which I'll show you in a few minutes, or a few seconds rather, um, was sort of based on collecting different paint rollers for a period of two years, I think, um, before we actually finished uh, the project. So it's uh, about exhausting the idea in some cases. So actually there are 65 images in this series, but uh, we'll leave it at this one. And we also occasionally work with the commissions, um, um, and um, we'll show you a couple of uh, examples. Uh, we're very selective with what we choose to do. Uh, we enjoy working with a very tight brief that gives us uh, freedom. Um, for instance, this uh, project that we developed for a Danish footwear company uh, is a good example. Um, it, uh, well, basically the company gave us complete freedom to do uh, exactly what we wanted to do. The, the only sort of request they had is uh, that they wanted us to be slightly more provocative, uh, which is not something that we necessarily wanted to follow. Uh, we also occasionally do commission for friends, uh, like the people from Ordinary Magazine, um, which we also enjoy uh, doing because the idea uh, and the concept of the media fits perfectly with what we do. Uh, or we work with publications like uh, Süddeutsche Zeitung, uh, which is a, a magazine that has a, l a long tradition for furthering uh, new photographers and giving them the freedom needed. So, as you can see from this uh, introduction, we're very interested in a lot of different things and we operate within quite a lot of different fields. But now for something slightly different. Uh, it's actually a project that we haven't shown uh, very many times, uh, and that represents a slightly different aspect of, of our work, which is uh, conceptual art or process-based art. Um, most of our photo uh, photographic work falls into the category of still life photography. Um, and for, for this project, we decided to start with the root of still life, which is paintings. Uh, so we chose this image from Picasso. 
uh, and set ourselves the task to design a painting, uh, which uh, represents sort of a contradiction in itself. Uh, if we do sort of a very hard uh, generalization, uh, the design process is reproducible and suited for mass production, whereas uh, sort of artistic processes are considered unique. Um, However, there are numerous examples of artistic practices that make use of mass production. For example, Takashi Murakami or, um, or Jeff Koons have armies of assistants uh, working for them. Um, Damien Hirst, for example, never touched a, a brush for his spot paintings. Uh, they were painted in a separate studio where he never set foot and choices on color, etc., were left for his, uh, his assistants to decide. Uh, and also historically, like great masters of chess, uh, Raphael, um, and uh, masterworks can be attributed to the workshop rather than the artist himself. Uh, the Sistine Chapel was uh, also completed with the help of a lot of assistants, which is maybe natural because of the scale. Um, so these uh, sort of uh, yeah, questions or examples raise, uh, uh, raise some interesting thoughts for us. Um, what happens if an artist becomes more of a project manager, manager or an art director uh, or a critic in the execution of, of his or her own ideas? Uh, how much is lost in the communication between the artist and the assistants? So what we did was that we sent uh, an image of the Picasso painting uh, to a virtual employee service in India uh, with the instructions of having a written description made. Uh, what came back was around three uh, pages. It was completed in six hours. There was no communication between us and our virtual employee during that time. Um, and it was basically a description in as much detail as possible about everything you can see in that painting, uh, everything related to light, uh, composition, style. Uh, we then took that uh, written description and sent it off to a custom oil painting service in China uh, with the instruction of having uh, a painting commissioned based on the written description only. So at no point did we offer any, uh, any visual reference. So after about a month or so, the UPS guy rang the door and this is the painting that we received. Uh, so as you can see, even though this is a conceptual constructed and fake process, uh, in one way, it still gives a very good indication of the pitfalls of communication and how much is lost in translation between words and visuals, uh, between one person's uh, mind and the hand uh, of others. Uh, and here for comparison. So basically, our intention with this, with this is that now we can repeat this process with any number of paintings, creating sort of a neatly packaged conceptual artwork. Of course, this also raises a lot of questions about ownership, authorship, copyright, and so on, but uh, we won't go into that now. So another project that also deals with the, with the use of images, in this case uh, stock photography, is our photography on project. Uh, that we showed at the Finnish Museum of Photography and Copenhagen Photo Festival recently. Um, so for this project, we decided to use different online photo services, places where you can order custom or personalized uh, photo gifts. Uh, there are around 35 images and objects in this series, and we'll just uh, highlight a few of them here. Um, uh, for example, the Nike uh, t-shirt, which plays uh, both on the t-shirt inception meme, which was out a, uh, some time ago, 
but it is also again a discussion about ownership, branding and image rights. So we've taken an image of a neatly folded Nike t-shirt and printed that image on a generic brand t-shirt, uh, essentially allowing us to make our own uh, Nike t-shirt. Of course, it's a bit of a gray zone. Uh, and this one is uh, some examples of more obscure uh, photo gift items that we have come across. Uh, a pet urn, for example. Um, and also uh, window blinds that you're able to, to print with any choice of your image. Uh, we also work quite a bit with perception and optical illusion in some of our images. Uh, so, for example, the swimming pool tiles uh, are a, a dialogue between 2D and 3D. Uh, we had the images of the sun's reflection uh, in water printed on bathroom tiles, uh, which were then mounted and re-photographed. So it's an, an image of an image. Uh, so the last example follows in the footsteps of the pool image, uh, optical illusion and the idea of, of a wordplay. So the playing cards are printed with an image of a red brick wall and simulate a solid brick building uh, redone as a house of cards. And last but not least, it's a lovely salad cake. Uh, that was a bit of an insight to some things that we have uh, been working with. Um, we have a lot of new projects in the pipeline. Uh, we hope to go more into publishing. Uh, previously, we've done the tribute to the Salami book, uh, and we found that this small collage book is a good way of getting ideas out of the system. So hopefully we'll have some more publications coming up very soon. Uh, we're also working a lot with uh, smaller uh, objects. Um, this was a collaboration with a Swiss company. Um, and we also have more products uh, and sculptures, installations in the works, and we hope you'll stay tuned for what's to come. So thank you very much for having us. We're super excited to be here. We look forward to the workshop in the next uh, couple of days, and hopefully it will turn out to something fun.